got the BRICS summit that will be coming up later this month, and the theme of uh, that conference uh, at the BRICS summit will be around how to do business in Africa, of course, between Africa and the BRICS. Now, we join in our studio by uh, Lucy Corkett. She is with RMB. Lucy, thanks for your time. Now, of course, that's a big summit because it's the first time on African soil that we've got the presidents of Russia, Brazil, China, India, and of course, uh, President Jacob Zuma uh, congregating here in Africa and coming to sit. What are you guys expecting? I'll tell you what we're expecting, but I want to hear first what you're expecting. Well, I think, I think, Godfrey, what we're expecting here is to see South Africa crystallize its relationship with the other BRICS countries. Right. There's been a lot of debate around what South Africa's role is in this grouping and whether South Africa is actually representative of Africa yeah. in the grouping in and of itself. Right. And I think that South Africa is going to take this opportunity yeah. to basically get rid of any doubts on both of those counts and to shift the focus specifically in terms of trade, aid and investment towards the African continent. Absolutely. When you talk to analysts and the people who watch BRICS and Africa and that kind of thing, they will tell you, no, there's really nothing for uh, South Africa to be benefiting out of this. So I want us to try and see if we can crystallize, as you, that's the word you used, what those exact benefits will be for South Africa, for perhaps Africa. I think, I think there are a couple of things. From yeah. South Africa's side, obviously, by association with some of the most exciting and dynamic emerging markets yeah. in the globe at the moment is a very good thing. And South Africa has a reputation for punching above its weight in terms of its foreign policy. Right. And this just essentially confirms that. Yeah, the other countries have got bigger economies, faster growth, bigger populations, etc., etc. Exactly. And I think as well, South Africa has realized that in order to go forward from an economic perspective, from a business perspective, and definitely from a political perspective, there needs to be a, a lot more regionalization and cooperation at a regional level right. with other African countries. Right. Hence the theme for this BRICS summit, which is going to shift the focus uh, of the BRICS countries and all that commercial energy into the African continent. And South Africa is trying to position itself as a kind of conduit for this kind of attention. Absolutely. The other question, of course, that people have been asking is you've got uh, BRICS now, which South Africa is officially a member of, never mind Jim O'Neill saying, no, I don't agree, etc., etc. You have IBSA as well, which is India, Brazil, and South Africa. Do you need the parallel structures, or perhaps we need to do away with one? I think both have their merits. They do. Um, IBSA was a partnership that was developed and formed uh, quite a number of years prior to the, to, to the BRICS grouping. Mm -hmm. And obviously that came together by certain interests that India, Brazil and South Africa had. But obviously if you want to make an impact in the world, yeah. and particularly when you're looking at international f uh, financial architecture, you cannot ignore China. Absolutely. And increasingly you can't ignore Russia either. So I think that while both have their, uh, their focuses, their respective focuses, I think it is important for South Africa to be um, a member of both. I'm sure the guys at RMB have sat down and said, South Africa's membership of BRICS must yield concrete results. And you know, people sometimes try to put this in terms of numbers. From where RMB sits as a house view, is there a percentage that we can, for, we can actually zero in and say uh, South Africa's membership of IBSA, South Africa's membership of the BRICS will add one percentage point, two percentage point, three, five point five percentage points, I hope, onto South Africa's GDP? I think at this stage, it, it's possibly a little bit early to make those kinds of projections. IBSA. Sure in and of itself is less of a commercial partnership and more yeah. of a kind of a foreign policy collaboration type partnership on international fora. Right. In terms of the BRICS grouping itself, yeah. I think this might uh, focus a little bit more from the summit coming forward because what is going to be announced next week yeah. is the formation of the BRICS Business Council. Yes. And I think this is particularly focused towards actually achieving those kinds of concrete So that will results. be the engine actually in which transactions will be we will take place. Exactly, because as everybody knows, a lot of transactions happen with they happen with relationships, forming those relationships, and you need the right people to meet each other from all of those different countries in order to facilitate the kind of trade and investment that we're all looking for. So when the dust is settled, the helicopters have come and gone, etc., and we remain and we sift through the, 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 I wanted to say wreckage, it won't be wreckage, it'll actually be, as you said, relationships. Uh, what do you expect to see? Deals signed or is this more about handshaking than it is about actually structuring real deals and someone walking away and saying, we're going to be investing X amount into oil and gas, we're going to be doing X and X into trade and investment and that kind of thing? 
I think that the BRICS grouping is very different to, for instance, the Forum on China-Africa Cooperation, where we've always seen a number of really high-profile deals being signed yeah. as, a, as a matter of course. I think if, some, if these kinds of large deals are signed, it will be more in terms of an indirect result of, of this forum. I think what, in terms of a concrete result and what we can really look forward to is yeah. more information on the so-called BRICS Development Bank that is under consideration at the moment, okay. because that is a really exciting opportunity. And more so in terms about how certain mechanisms that were announced at the previous BRICS summit, for instance, in terms of cross-listing on the various countries' stock exchanges right. and a convertibility of the different currencies, kind of bypassing the US dollar uh, as, a, as, a, as an intermediary currency, yeah. as it yeah. were. I think those are the kinds of aspects that are actually going to facilitate a trade and investment, and that will only happen if those initiatives are, are worked on by all the parties involved. Absolutely. I think the run needs its friends right now because what's happening out there, out there, it needs as many legs as it can get. What about Africa and BRICS and South Africa? Is it one relationship? Is it a triangled relationship? I think that is a very, very complex matter. I think that South Africa, for its part, has realized the need to invest much more thoroughly in its relationship with its other, with, with other African countries, be they neighbors or be they the powerhouses like uh, Kenya, Nigeria, etc. And I think that what South Africa is trying to do is strengthen its Africa relationship yeah. by using uh, the BRICS grouping because there is a lot of interest um, from the BRICS countries in Africa. Right. And I think some kind of structural structure or, or framework to kind of regulate th the sorts of investments and the trade relationships that we're seeing yeah. is, is what South Africa might have in mind. Yeah. And especially in terms of getting in on this relationship because obviously there's a lot of activity on that front. So when do you do that? Do you do that now or do you do it after? I mean, structuring that kind of relationship because we do know, of course, I mean, when you look at China, it's a billion people plus, India, a billion plus people, right? is yes, smaller but in terms of economic size and natural resources mm -hmm. much bigger we know how complex the Africa South Africa relationship is dealing with 53 different types of countries different economic systems different levels of development I'm wondering what that structure might look like well, I think here's the interesting thing is that a lot of these trade and, um, and investment relationships have happened organically without any kind of structure at all. Yeah. And I think what we're Tell seeing... Tell the politicians to go away. <laughs> <laughs> I think what we're seeing is a bit of an in, um, institutional lag. Yeah. And But what... what what will happen is that a lot of these relationships can be streamlined, particularly if there are the kinds of forum where the people that need to can actually talk to one another. So what we can maybe see is these institutions being built, right. um, the forums being created, the, the relationships being developed, and then a lot of the, the noise around, around these partnerships can actually yeah. be, be swept away and it can become much more streamlined and effective.